Welcome to episode 25 of the Woodwind Doubling Channel, and today it's my uh, personal bassoon setup. This is a Fox Model 3. That's an all synthetic bassoon, uh, but it passes for a real one because it's got the lovely silver bands on the end of the joints, so it just looks like it's a black lacquered shiny bassoon, rather than looking like an obvious plastic bassoon. can matter a little bit in orchestras if you get fussy conductors in a pit, nobody cares. They only care what it sounds like and that you get to it on time. Um, it's the straight ahead uh, Fox 3C vocal. Uh, I've tried other vocals on it. I've got some fancy expensive vocals and they don't really work any better than this one does on this particular horn. Um, and I'm using uh, right now Legere uh, synthetic bassoon reeds. I've been doing that for the entire last year in playing chorus line. It just makes things so much easier if you're doubling in a show. If I was going to do a bunch of uh, orchestral playing or maybe uh, single instrument playing, I'll probably dig out some of the, the reeds that I've made. Uh, I was actually making decent enough reeds that real bassoonists were using them for a while. So uh, there's always that possibility to go back to. Uh, this instrument, in terms of uh, key work, it's keyed to a high D. It has a uh, sliding right hand whisper lock. There's not really any other fancy key work on it. Uh, I'd love to get eventually uh, an A flat to B flat trill key added because that uh, takes care of the one impossible trill that seems to show up in uh, most shows. And uh, it'd also be nice to get uh, maybe keyed up to a high E or F, uh, just for those rare occasions that would uh, mean I wouldn't have an excuse anymore not to go up into the stratosphere. Now, um, the, uh, the one cool thing about this particular setup is I have a wink leg rest on it. Now, as you can see, it's a big, large, curved metal bracket, bolts on uh, underneath at the cup, and uh, it just fits into the cup, and then bolts on here, back where the uh, the neck strap would normally go. And that means that I can just put the bassoon right onto my leg. Once everything's set up and uh, tailored to your own height and uh, circumstance, very, very easy to make a change. Literally grab the instrument, boom, it's on your leg. And I often will place it actually on my left side. If any of you watched uh, some of my uh, time-lapse footage from Chorus Line, I would have my bassoon about over here. It comes right over onto the leg and away we go. Very, very easy to play it that way. Uh, now, as opposed to what a lot of bassoonists uh, do who are single instrument players, um, I do use a crutch on it. I know a lot of them don't. That's the uh, hand rest down here. Uh, but what I started doing, uh, the crutch is actually meant to go this way by design, and your hand sits here against it. What I found is that my hand feels like it wants to slide down all the time. So by turning this this way and putting the bulb right in the center of my hand, it, I feel like I've got much more control over the instrument. It's uh, certainly been working for me, and that's my preferred way of doing it now. So I, I used to play on a Colert, which is an older uh, Checkmate instrument, uh, which was wooden, had a few other nice keys on it, it had uh, the sliver key E-flat over here. Uh, that's the other thing I'd like to put on here, too, is, the, is a right-hand E-flat mechanism, which a sliver key would go with as well, and it gives you a lot of different uh, ways of getting to and from E-flats, because that can be one of the notoriously tricky notes. We'll be talking about some uh, fingering niceties on the bassoon later on in uh, further episodes. So there you have it, a pretty simple setup. Uh, Fox Model 3, Legere Reed, uh, the uh, all-plastic, fantastic bassoon setup. So that's it for the Woodwind Doubling channel today. Please subscribe. Uh, any products and uh, things like that I've mentioned will be in the show notes below. And I'll see you next time. Happy doubling.